Hi everybody and welcome to the special month edition of Turning On To Harbor. So this is for the month of February and I've got with me today one of my favorite podcasters over here, Mr. Dale <laughs> Wetland. What's going on, my man? Hey, how's it going? I'm so excited to be here because it was nice. To, we had you on our uh, on the Decast um, that is now called Disney Culture Club, but we right. had uh, you on the Decast when you did your video for us, which was amazing. Your this week on YouTube remix, I loved it so much. I still I use it as our. I've have cut it down a bit because it's a little long, but for like a, a transition. Uh, but I. I love it. It's so great. And people the other day on Instagram were asking where they could listen to it and where they could get it from. Uh, cool. I have a bird in the background. I'm sorry. My, it's my, I don't normally have a bird in the background when I do a show and it was chirping. During, it wasn't chirping the whole time, but now it's just chirping all the time. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry about that. Dale and I were saying before the recording that it sounded a little bit like the Tiki Room. So I was yeah. like, you know what? This week we're going to be talking about uh, Dale's video that he made probably, what was it, three or four months ago? Yeah, about... with my friend. I have a friend come on, and she, because uh, she's like the ultimate planner. So yeah, so uh, they did a video about going to Disneyland and having the ultimate day. So getting everything into one day. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that later. But uh, really quickly, I want to talk a little bit about Network 1901. Uh, that's what Dale is a part of. That's what he's kind of created with uh, Josh and Angie and Shannon and and Andy, who is now uh, conscious. Uh, what was it? Conscious uncoupling. From, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, from yeah. A, yeah, he he, he wanted to do the decast on his own, um, and we were totally cool with that. And so now he does it on uh, Andy Herndon um, on YouTube channel or the decast podcast feed if you want to keep listening to the decast. Right, cool. So uh, I've been listening to, I mean, I've listened to Network since it, it started, yeah. but uh, we've been listening to this new show that happens on Friday. So uh, if anybody who doesn't know, they do shows on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays, you've got the Disney Culture Club with uh, Dale and Shannon or Dale and Josh. Are, are yep. all three of you guys hosts at the same time or does it just kind of rotate? No, they just, so I'm the, I'm the mainstay host and then they rotate. Cool. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. So you've got Disney Culture Club on Monday. You've got uh, Modern Mouse Radio on Wednesday with Josh and seems like Zach has been on most of the time these days. <laughs> yeah, but, well, uh, Zach, Zach and him are, and Josh are getting along really well. I'm not gonna say it makes me extremely jealous, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they live they, they live in the same house and stuff too. So, and Zach's a cool guy. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you've also got the rotating show on Friday. So originally it was Explain This Book to Me, and then it was, um, it was the world Josh's that never was. show, The World yeah. Never Was, that was like a uh, WNYZ Chicago meets um, NPR, meets yeah, meets NPR. Serial, yeah. where he oh basically gosh. goes over all the failed Disney projects that have happened. And his season two is coming out, which is really exciting, and it's one of our most... Uh, it is our most popular uh, podcast series we've ever had on Network 1901. Which is absolutely insane. And one of the um, best Disney history shows that I've listened to. Because, you know, I listen to a lot of different podcasts about about Disney. Because I'm a super nerd like all of you guys. <laughs> and uh, just the, the production value was super there. But what I was trying to get to is now we have moved on to this new Friday show called Discovering Star Wars. Which is with... Uh, Dale and uh, your good friend. What's your good friend's name again? His name's Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, but he's yes. not a part of the network. I, I like to bring my friends on uh, just to, to kind of do stuff. The, the reason what's great about Andrew is he's a film student who had never seen Star Wars before. And I was always curious is if you should, if you watch them chronologically, would it make the prequels more enjoyable? So Andrew has, we, we did one, episode one is kind of like a baseline knowledge episode where we ask him, like, through pop culture, you know, what do you know about Star Wars? And then episode two, we get on to watching. He watches. He watched The Phantom Menace, and then we talk about it. So you don't watch it with him, but he'll tell you about his experience, and we do it one by one. And he, he doesn't binge watch all the shows. He really takes his time between each show before we uh, we talk about them. And uh, the bird is just killing. <laughs> and it's like, I'm, I'm like really, it. like... It's cool and stuff, I guess, but like I'm like really like a controlled environment <laughs> type of person when I do my show, and I hate when little things happen, which we've been having uh, happen lately, and just uh, yeah, but it's fine. The bird's cool, and uh, <laughs> and uh, so the yeah, so basically we go through episode episode right currently right now is a, we're at a new hope. We've made it through the prequels. He watched Rogue One before he watched a New Hope, 
And now we sat and we talked about A New Hope, which uh, has been great. Andrew's just getting more and more confident and better and better. And uh, the show is really, really fun. And it's great because none of us got to have got to experience Star Wars the way Andrew is experiencing it now. So it, that's the thing. If you love Star Wars, it's perfect to listen to because it's getting to experience Star Wars for the first time in a way that you never got to experience it. And that's kind of the whole part of the show. And we're trying to see if it's more enjoyable. And I'm not going to spoil it to tell you if he likes the prequels or not. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm not gonna spoil it. <laughs> and I won't say anything. You, about you, it you have to discover that for yourself if you listen. If you really want to know, uh, because it, it, we're kind of trying to do like a scientific experiment. Not experiment. Not really. Like, not really. Like, I'm not not too like a blind case study here. <laughs> but we're just trying to be um, as neutral about it as possible. And he really like could have cared less about Star Wars. Obviously, he never went out of his way to watch the film. So this isn't taking someone who really was excited about Star Wars and wanted to get into it. He's kind of like, I've never seen Star Wars before. I'm like, you want to do a podcast? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's yeah, been really cool awesome. to kind of watch you guys as each episode continues. And it seems like Andrew just keeps getting more and more excited about the culture. Like he's like, yeah, dude, yeah. I would totally go buy toys. I would totally go yeah. buy like these dvds yeah. and stuff just it was um, his birthday this weekend and i got him a darth maul figure and it's his very nice. first star wars toy so um that's right. yeah 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 he yeah he, the the only yeah he is getting more and more excited about being part of the fandom and it, it it's actually funny he's re the most he's excited about is watching the force awakens because once it's he, he then it's done he watches force awakens and then he can come to the movie with us in december you know so yeah uh, it, it's been pretty exciting yeah very cool. So that's what's happening, Network 1901. Um, and then we've got this person who is working on all these great projects. Mr. Dale Wetland, tell me a little bit about yourself. How have you gotten into the Disney fandom culture? How have you, how have you put yourself out there so that, um, so that you can be heard by other people? Yeah, well, so the big thing was when I did like a family road trip to Disneyland... I just like started watching videos about Disneyland and because when I did Disney World I kind of relied on Lauren's expertise and I didn't really do anything myself. So when I did this family road trip to Disneyland, I started like watching YouTube. I was like, oh, there's people do YouTube videos about it. And then there was podcasts. I'm like, oh, I'm into podcasts. What podcast was it? And I started listening to the Dcast. And then Andy had said something on the show about the um, the Renaissance era versus the revival era, and I kind of just did my Dale thing and wrote him this thing. And he was like, Oh, that's cool. Can you keep like writing for us? So I kept writing and he was like, you know, I want a new, I'm looking for a new host. Do you want to host with me? And I was like, Oh yeah, sure. That'd be awesome. And then we kind of like grew, grew the show into, um, kind of like it became a little more uh, like, a like a news variety show before it was a purely news news show. And it, uh, it really grew. And then, I just kept getting more and more involved in it and, and just really tried to focus on getting a good microphone and, and, and working on just production and stuff like that. And I li was listening to Modern Mouse Radio and I wanted to become friends with Josh. So I just started messaging him <laughs> and, and then was like one night I uh, just was like, wouldn't it be kind of neat if we just joined forces and had our own shows? But you know, per provided three shows a week to people and kind of did like a network, but it's not really, it's not really, it's not like a, a completely different network. Like it's not, I do, I kind of compare it. It's like, it's like ABC and each one of our things is a different show. But that's not entirely true. Network 1901 is kind of like its own show. And we have like three different parts of that show where Modern Mouse Radio and Disney Culture Club offer you this these certain things throughout the week. And then we have a rotating show that offers you some variety. So um, yeah, you know, network1901.com has all of like the YouTube videos that we do because we do videos Monday, Wednesday, Fridays as well. Every Friday is a park from Disneyland is a video from Disneyland now. Wednesdays is usually a culture video and then Mondays is the Disney Culture Club video where we do a video version of our our Monday show. And uh, yeah, like I don't know, like I just kind of keep getting involved and everyone's been so nice. Like as you you know, like when you reach out to people they either ignore you or they reply and they are and they and they want to help like they want to do that they yeah. want to do the thing with you and so luckily you know i've had jim zub and he didn't ignore me and um sarah and leo for the thing of vlogs they didn't ignore me and um richard and sarah from skywalking through neverland and and all the all these different things but you know 
there's and other guests like we just had a guest uh, Trent um, from the Disney DNA podcast on the show and yeah, like the community is just really supportive um, for the most part and yeah. so if if you really just have the courage to kind of just keep going at it you can just keep um, getting interesting people Super Carlin Brothers you know they were a big yeah. help for our show and Absolutely. and uh, were a big part of our success that we're continuing to have and and it's still growth right. It's all, you know, your your success is just measured by whatever goals you set for yourself. So it's been it's been really exciting. That uh, Leo's so good. Um, I've been thinking about getting him back on the show and stuff like that. We've, you know, he, he, but he, and he's so busy, but he still just makes time for everybody, and, and that's the thing. And Network Nineteen Hundred One is really inclu- it's very all about inclusion and making sure that um, people feel comfortable because you know we grew up loving Disney stuff. Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, you know, Pixar, all that stuff, mm-hmm. but not always comfortable to talk about it. And so we wanted to give a place for people to feel comfortable to, to geek out about the stuff they love about. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to go into the meat of the episode now. We're going to be talking a little bit about the ultimate one day at Disneyland. So Lauren and Dale made a video, as we said at the beginning of the show. Uh, it's probably about half hour and it it goes through an entire day from start to finish of what you should be doing to make the if you only have like one day in the parks so yeah. how, how what was your thought process as you went through this and how how did you figure how did you figure this out yeah so uh basically lore when we went to walt disney world with lauren she made sure we had exactly the like maximum amount of experience with like a good amount of rest time you know organized and well if we're going to eat lunch here this will be our pathway and to the parks and this is what we'll do so we'll eat here you know so she's like she's just amazing that way and and why not right it's the way to maximize your time and and it's expensive to go so Mm -hmm. have the best experience is you know it's not you know, because you could just go there and eat different foods all day, or you could go. So this is like kind of the the best overall experience. If you have one day, you do these things, and you've done you you know you'll you'll be happy. So you know, we have a whole direction in which we want to start because there's certain restaurants, certain snack places. Yeah. Um, basically, our pathway is de- de- designed by food, but the attractions <laughs> it is uh, uh, is about organizing your fast passes. And making sure you have like a runner or somebody going to go to going to Space Mountain to get your passes at the right amount, of, it's, but it's at the right time because you can't just go get it any time willy nilly. Right. You have to go at the right time so you get the right time so it all kind of flows in together. So that stuff's really important. We I love California Adventure, but this was just for one day at Disneyland, mm-hmm. and you could do California Adventure. You just do waste a lot of time. I would say you probably waste if you have anybody else with you and you're not by yourself. You probably waste a half an hour to a half an hour at least leaving Disneyland and getting into California Adventure. Right. And that's going to be the tricky part. So that kind of leads me into the next point. Uh, I get to go at the end of March for a convention. Uh, It's called STN, which is a student television network. It's a convention at the Anaheim Convention Center for um, my class that I get to go with. And my teacher is cool enough to let us go to Disneyland the first day and then get to go to the convention. And we have one day, so I was like, this would be the perfect time to test out <laughs> Dale and Lauren's thing. So yeah. we're going to make a vlog. My friend Ron and I, my, uh, one of my good friends Ron, does a does a vlog um, just of like daily life, and he said he wanted to vlog some stuff. So I was like, I've got an idea for what we can do at the parks that day. And he said, all right, let's try it. And so I kind of, we have a hopper pass. So then I kind of had to go into it and think, okay, how are we going to also incorporate DCA into it a little bit because we want to get the maximum into it, as you said, in one day. And it's going to be a little bit more difficult because of that time wasted going between park to park. But I, um, I kind of planned it out and I wanted to, uh, I want to know what you kind of think. And so I, I wrote out everything that, uh, was in your video. <laughs> yeah. So I have everything from coming at rope drop. And then you said that, um, you would then go into Adventureland, start with the dole whip. Yeah. Um, well, cause you get to do the tiki room and you get a dole whip and you skip the, like you skip the line, like the line cause you're in the, the other side. Right. And, and it's nice to do the tiki room's always a nice thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could wait for later if it's when it's hot out and stuff like that, but it's just nice to sit and eat your dole whip and walk, go, go on the tiki room. Absolutely. And so, then what I thought was 
um, if we're going to do DCA, you kind of need to grab a fast pass for Radio Springs Racers very early in the day. And, I, I, and it's probably not as bad now as it was like two years ago when we went when Radiator Springs was still somewhat new but I feel like you still probably need to get there early enough to where your passes will be um, you know earlier in the day so that yeah. you can get more and so my thought was that instead of going uh, rope drop going into Disneyland if you went into DCA you could go get your fast pass for racers and then since the fast pass kiosk is very close you could go on Soren from there yeah. Because you're right there. And then go back into Disneyland and start with Adventureland. Because then... They, they open at different times, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Depending... So just double check double check what day you're going and what time they're going to open on that day. Okay. Uh, that's important. So... Depending on the day, it opens at a, at a different time. Yeah. And because you have a park hopper, your ticket might also be eligible for the extra magic morning. So double check that because that's huge to get it an hour, even an hour earlier. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, DCA doesn't do a, a, a magic hour. And I, so it might open an hour later in those instances. So okay. just double check, double check with that. Um, but yeah, that's a great idea because you would want to save Grizzly River Rapids um, for after DCA in, in the afternoon. I also love the Little Mermaid ride, mm -hmm. uh, so do that. You know, you can really you like. I like Mike and Sully and the Monsters, but you can really skip it. It's a dark ride. Mm -hmm. you basically, pick the dark ride you want to do, and then do that one, and then they're all the same. I'd recommend Peter Pan because that's the best dark ride. Right. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I, there is a way to do DCA for sure. You just got to be good at like, you know. So go get, yeah. If you want to go on Radiator Springs, that's got to be your priority. So as soon as DCA opens up, you need to be there getting your, your fast pass. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Uh, and so let's hypothetically, do we know does... And you're young. You're not going with a family. So it's not yeah. going to take you a full half hour. That's, that's a good call too. Is there, you know, we're two 16 year olds, so we're going to be able to be somewhat quicker. Um, hypothetically, let's pretend that the two parks do open at the same day or we get there at the same time so let's pretend um because i think what's actually going to happen is that we are flying in the early morning from sacramento to los angeles and then going to the parks from there so we might be getting in at like 10 o'clock so yeah. maybe getting to the parks around 10 30 so we're pretending like they're both open at that same time so you go so then go dca get go your, dca yeah, you're right grab that and then go and start with Dale and Lauren's day. So you go into Adventureland, grab the Dole Whip, like we said, grab an Indie Fast Pass. Would you grab the Indie Fast Pass before the Dole Whip? Or... No, nah, there's not, it's not that, it's not that much of an emergency. Okay. Cool. You know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then go... You can uh, if you want. That's up to you. Like, if you want to do that, that that's totally fine. It's just not, like, it's not, it's not the ultimate rush. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. And so then after that, you said kind of like in that first hour, see if you can pop out Splash Mountain, Winnie the Pooh, and Pirates, and the Haunted Mansion, just kind of going all the way back and then making your way back yeah. towards Indy. And getting whatever fast passes for whatever. Yeah, like that's the thing. Yeah, because you're waiting for Indy, right? Mm -hmm. So just do that and just, and then hopefully Indy will be available. Right. If, but if, Splash, if it's a really hot, sunny day, Splash Mountain might be busier. So maybe that's the fast pass you want to get instead of Indy. Mm -hmm. um, and then after, after your. Uh, after this the fast pass system is a little bit different now too with what they're introducing and sometimes you can get a fast pass and then you just have to wait an hour and even though your fast pass time isn't up yet you can still get another fast pass for the other attraction so just read your ticket of what it exactly says for when you can get your other fast pass and then just make sure to go get those cool so i actually didn't know that is it that is that for every single rider is it only for no a couple I, I, but there, there are some like one and i you know um this is but my actual physical experience but no one ever really has talked about it as much but yeah i'll it'll see like it'll say your fast pass time and then at the bottom it was like you can get it's like the next time you can get a fast pass mm -hmm. some is it'll tell you the time oh that's kind of cool it's probably maybe uh, like an hour and a half or something yeah if it's more than an hour and a half then maybe it gives you that specific other time yeah because space mountain sometimes it's at like six o'clock at night so right 
you can still get other fast passes while you're waiting for that one time to come up. So you get your late one. It's like six o'clock at night, but it's ten. It's still only eleven o'clock mm-hmm. in the afternoon. So, um, yeah, you know, again, that's the thing because you don't have the, you don't have to. It is you can go to Space Mountain to double check to see what the wait times are. Like, I recommend getting the app. Yeah. Just to see what the wait times are or what the fast pass wait times are at. Okay. And so you can know if you need to go head, like run over to Space Mountain to get your fast pass and then head back to where you're where you're going. Right. Okay, so if we're going from so we're gonna go back yeah. into that first hour, so you've just rode Indiana Jones, it was a blast. Yeah. So now <laughs> Uh, your thought was to go grab some Mickey beignets and a mint julep on your way back. And oh, this, yeah. this is where, um... It opens it, up. Right. In your video, it, this was kind of at like 1030. So you would kind of just have to really hit, <clears throat> excuse me, hit those first like four rides in Critter Country in New Orleans Square pretty yeah. quickly and then grab the beignets and the mint julep. And then you're going to continue to go back through Adventureland. You can hit Tarzan. You can hit Jungle Cruise at that point. Yeah. And then you said to go to Frontierland to grab a Fast Pass for Big Thunder and then to ride Big Thunder. So what what do you suggest? Would you rather do so a... So go get your... If you're, if, you're, if you're there and you can get a Fast Pass, grab your Fast Pass and then like... <laughs> you know, go get your beignets and and and, and do Jungle Cruise because Jungle Cruise is great. Right. You know, I, and I like the Tarzan thing. Like, if you just walk through it, it's boring. But if you go and like touch all the stuff and pull on the rope and stuff, Tarzan, it's like it's cheesy, but it's fun. Yeah, and uh, there are a couple cool photo ops, and you can yeah. see the park really well from up yeah. top since you're up in the trees. So, in yeah. New, Orle- New Orleans Square is such a great place to just sit and kind of relax for a minute. And, mm-hmm. You know, you'll be standing in line already now if you've done Pirates and all this stuff. So, so, um, and, and you just kind of have to, you do have to look at it and kind of gauge by your wait times, right? Yeah, absolutely. But, but yeah, so, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how you want to do it. So then after you said to go to Frontierland, you would say kind of, um, I don't know if you would want to get the fast pass or if you would just want to go and, and brave the lineup. It just kind of depends on the wait time there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thunder Mountain is, you know, a 20 <coughs> minute wait. Go on Thunder Mountain and don't get a fast pass. Right. So then, if you're with more than a group of three, and your uh, your video was kind of talking about being more with like a group of how many people? Do you well, it it, de- it depended, right? Like I was, I, I had said that if it's just you and one other person, you know, you're gonna have a lot more flexibility. But if you're mm-hmm. with like a small group of people, send like send runners with everybody's Disneyland card or mm-hmm. reader, and and right. and then go to the fast passes while everyone waits in line, you know? Yeah, and then. Uh, so your thought was to maybe grab fast passes for Space Mountain, so you could send two people yeah. to Space Mountain and then head over to Plaza Inn for a brunch or maybe even a late lunch if if yeah. that's where you're at at that point. Yeah, but you you know again like I because th- I do think dining is such a huge part of the Disneyland experience and the brunch there is awesome. You get to meet a ton of characters. That's the thing. If you start with Adventureland and New Orleans Square and Critter Country, so you get a ton of e-ticket attractions like off the list right you know you get tons of great experiences you when you go to when you go to plaza inn for brunch you get a bunch of characters off the list Mm -hmm. and you can kind of be like i got to see a lot of characters and stuff and so when you see them out and about you don't have to focus on them absolutely and i feel that with a younger group i think the character thing is a big big deal and then you can kind of feel like you've gotten that part of the day out of the way but then um for a couple of teenagers uh you know me and my my friend ron the characters are not as much of a priority and so then i was thinking that maybe instead of plaza inn your um your radiator springs racers fast pass might be ready to go by then yeah so then what you could do is you could go back over to uh, Racers, you could go through Cars Land and kind of walk through because you don't have to do flying tires or jamboree because, you know. You really don't? Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so then from Radiator Springs, you could continue through that little walkway that goes yep. toward the bakery part museum and then continue on to the uh, pier section and go hit California screaming, 
Yeah, but and that's also where you could get your lunch or your brunch or whatever instead of Plaza Inn because you've yeah. got all the different types of foods there, which is uh, great options. And there's also a quick service restaurant that's over by Mickey's Fun Wheel that has yeah. uh, pizza and pasta and salads. And yeah. if I remember correctly, I think the pizza there was pretty dang killer. Like it was some uh, barbecue yeah, it's not bad. chicken pizza that was actually yeah. really good. Yeah, it's good. It's not it's not uh, the worst of carnival food. Yeah, absolutely, and it's obviously pretty quick because it's quick service and if i remember correctly i don't think it was that expensive and so then maybe while you're walking to the quick service restaurant over there uh you can go grab a fast pass for uh toy story midway mania which is very very new because they have only just started with the um testing of these kiosks from yeah. what i saw yeah. on uh i think it was mouse weight yeah, um, I'm not a big I'm not a big Toy Story Mania guy. I, okay. I, I like everyone like if you love Toy Story and you've never been on it, I recommend going on it and making your own decision. But it's just as like it's just a bunch of screens that you shoot at. Like it's not yeah, not for me. That's not my type of ride. Like I just it's it, I would much rather spend my time at the Little Mermaid ride because I think the Little Mermaid ride is so well done. That's uh, a um, great point. I think uh, the competitive side in me always wants to see if I can beat the person that I'm trying to play and the yeah. 3D elements are cool. But I was talking to uh, I was talking to Nick from the Disney Dude podcast a couple yeah, months ago. Yeah, he's awesome. Nick's awesome. And yeah. uh, Diz, Diz Central. Yeah, Diz Central is really cool. Uh, go check them out on Facebook. They have a, uh, a group that I'm in and that Dale is in as well. Yeah and um, a very good place to share. But anyway, we were talking about how it would be kind of cool if they did, kind of for Midway Mania, if they did a little bit more like they have Star Tours, where you can um, rotating scenes. So every time that you went in, there was a different way to do it. Because I think a lot of people, like yourself, have uh, maybe gotten a little bit tired with the way that it is being run right now, and the way that, um, you know, you kind of, you do the exact same thing every single time. Yeah, it's just uneventive. It, yeah. Like it, it like it, there's it it just wasn't very inventive and uh, uninventive is not a word, but <laughs> it was like it's just I don't it. I I don't really get the like it's not what I want. Like uh, yeah, Star Tours like heck the Star Tours model where if you put us in like a giant roller skate and mm -hmm. we're like going around Andy's room or something like that with the Toy that Story cool. characters. You know, like that's what a Toy Story like Toy Story guy people are about adventure. Why did Buzz Lightyear and Toy Story both get shooter games? Like it doesn't make it like it's like <laughs> yeah. that has nothing to do with the movies at all. It doesn't really fit the the realm. So that is kind of funny. I didn't think about that. Both Toy Story yeah. properties have They're the same game. games. They're basically yeah. the same the same <laughs> attraction, you know. Uh, and it, well, but it's just like Monsters Inc. Like, uh, you know, I felt that a a walk through maze where you're walking through different doors and stuff like that that would be better than what they have. I think it's just kind of an uninspired dark yeah. ride. I think yeah, the uh, the walkthrough idea would be really really cool. But I was uh, listening to an episode of the WDW radio show this last week where they talked about uh, how Pirates was supposed to be a walkthrough, yep. and they talked about the problem of having people haunted mansion as well. Yeah, haunted mansion as well, going through at their own pace, and you know you couldn't really monitor that as much as if you're in a car. So uh, sure. you know that would be the only downside to making it. Uh, walk through attraction, but uh, you could also have like a, a tour guide that could kind of continue yeah. to hurdle people. Yeah. But I think that's actually a really cool idea with the walk through of the doors, and you know, you could even make it so that you know you open. I don't know how they would work with this technology, but you could open a door and you could go through one place, and then the next person opens the door, and you're no longer there, and it's a different place. Yeah. Like, well, that that's the thing. It's like the attractions that are really great are the ones that work with the theme and fit inside the world that they've themselves create. Like, I think Tower of Terror turning into uh, Mission Breakout is great because I think the type of ride it is fits perfectly with the theme of the movie and the feel. Yeah. You know, the Little Mermaid ride is is perfect. Like, you it turns you around and you're in the clamshell and you, like, go underwater and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. it plays mm -hmm. with the imagery of water, which, again, fits within the ride. Like, that, that is a dark ride that works. Um, yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, and stuff like that. But Toy Story, like, it just that, that's not what Toy Story is about. Uh, that's not what Buzz Lightyear is about. I, I like Buzz Lightyear more, again, because of the ad animatronics and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's not what those 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 those, uh, those films are about. So that's always what kind of gets my goat. <laughs> uh, 
Grizzly River Rapids, though, I love. I, I love that ride. It's very yeah. reminiscent to the um, the Amazon River ride in uh, in Animal Kingdom. So I like that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And you know, I'm, I should. My thing is though, I think. Sorry, is this? I think no, with no, California no. Adventure is they yeah. should turn it more into a Pixar land, mm -hmm. and they should make Grizzly River Rapids dinosaur. Uh, the good dinosaur, oh my goodness. Make it like a good dinosaur um, theme, yeah. and you keep the wilderness theme of up, and you make Soren um, something else, <laughs> like something like something you know up the or something Pixar themed, like Wally, -E, and have yeah. them flying through things together or something. That could be cool as well. And I know um, y you could also do like the first thing that I thought of when you said um, changing Soren was maybe inside out because you know you're yeah. always shooting into somebody else's mind and then you can come back out of it pretending like the screen is the head I don't know there um, I, there are limitless possibilities <laughs> yeah. that we could continue to yeah. do and I would love to maybe go more in depth we were kind of talking a little bit about maybe doing an, uh, an armchair imagineering episode maybe before the D23 Expo and making some uh, predictions about maybe what uh, Disney Parks has to offer for us in the coming years, but totally. Again, going uh, getting so sidetracked. I think the key, I, I, think the key, I, I think the key with you though is uh, when you go to California Adventure, mm -hmm. you do everything you want to do in California Adventure and don't leave until that's done, and then go back to Disney. Do not go back and forth. Right, 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 right. So what you, what I was thinking is that I would um, that you would get. Your your food. You would do Toy Story Midway Mania if that's your thing. If it's yeah, not, hey, no big hey, deal. Hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> and then maybe hit Little Mermaid because again, that's also one of my favorites, um, just because of the way that they have created it and the yeah. the animatronics and everything. And so then you could kind of just hit as many things as you want on the way back. So you could go through there and hit Grizzly, and then make your way back towards the uh, the entrance. Sure. Or you could go the other way and hit like the zeppelins and the swings, and then yeah. walk your way around that way and and uh, go out the the exit for for DCA and go back into Disneyland, and then we kind of get back into your ultimate day with Lauren. So then yeah. from there you said that um, your Space Mountain. Uh, Fast Pass is probably going to be ready by that point, so you could hop on Space Mountain, and then maybe grab a Fast Pass for Star Tours, and then go on the Nemo submarines because. Um, yeah, I love you... that. Oh man! And Josh, you recently went on them, and he was like, "You're right. It, it's it is a nice long ride. It's very engaging. It's very unique. It offer and the theming is perfect." Yeah, absolutely. I've only been on it once. Because my parents and sister, the other times that I've been, have been like, no, like you're waiting so long, and it's you're just going underwater in a submarine. I get claustrophobic, and I was like, the way that they have now told the story and changed it into Nemo is just the, uh, it's so cool, and uh, also one of my favorite uh, park soundtracks is uh, that 15 minute loop that they have for the entire time that you're going through. Yeah. Because they released that in an album, and yeah. it's one of the ones I listened to. One of my favorites is uh, mine's Space Mountain. Mm -hmm. The pew. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm Space Mountain all the way. It's my, yeah, it's usually my, it usually tops my list. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, really quickly, Space Mountain in Disney World or Disneyland? Uh, Disneyland Space Mountain is better. Because you're side by side. Yeah. Okay. I and, get that. And, and you've got the music behind you. Yeah. Where Disney World, I didn't, I didn't like the single individual seats. It made it feel more like Matterhorn to me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like a um, smoother version of Matterhorn in the dark. Which. And also. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, it just uh, Space Mountain should have single riders, and it doesn't, and it really should. But yeah. That's my. Yeah. 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 That's. Uh, We'll, we'll take that up with uh, Mr. Bob Iger <laughs> yeah. some other time. Okay, so then you're uh, after you go on Nemo because you usually they don't have a fast pass for that line, and each uh, vehicle is uh, or each submarine is a pretty long ride, so you're usually waiting in that line for between a half hour to forty five minutes depending. Yeah. And so um, by the time that you're done with that, you could probably hit 
the submer, uh, the Star Tours Fast Pass that you already had. Maybe hop over to, um, and this is going off of yours, yep. uh, heading over to Star Tours. And then you said to uh, hit Mickey and the Magical Map, which is uh, one of the stage shows that is kind of yeah. in between, um, in between Toontown, Toontown and, and Fantasyland. Fantasy yeah. 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 And, um, if you're not down to watch shows, though, like, don't go see it. Like, if right. you're going to, like, if, you know. I was 16, and I probably been like, I don't want to go see that. <laughs> but it, it's awesome, and like you can really just. I think the key when you go to Disneyland is just to like you have to just tell your buddy, be like, look, man, no judgment. It's just like sometimes I'm just gonna want to geek out, so let's just like geek out. And mm-hmm, who ca- mm-hmm. like who are we trying to be cool for? You know? Yeah. Like who we're not trying to be cool for anybody. And Absolutely. Mickey's Magical Map is a fantastic show, and I really recommend uh, everyone going to see it. Yeah, I remember one of the first episodes that I ever did of the Mickey D cast that uh, was absolutely a uh, a bit of a callback to the D cast because <laughs> that was one of my main influences back then was uh, reviewing Mickey and the Magical Map from uh, Disney Parks blog posts and a couple of videos that I had already seen. And then I got to watch it two years ago when I went for Maya's 12th birthday. And it was stellar, just like you said. Yeah. The, the way that they used the LCD screen behind them was really, really cool, and all the dancers and the the uh, Jungle Book characters that move their eyes and everything. That was just so, so cool. Yeah. But um, okay, so once you've done making the magical map, if if that's something that you want to do, uh, you said as you make your way into uh, Fantasyland. You can hit the Matterhorn. Definitely do a single rider if there's one or two of you, because I've seen that a lot of times you could even hit. Um, both of you can get into one car. Yeah, yeah. Matterhorn is such a quick ride. You don't need to really experience it together, so it's better to go single riders if you can. And sometimes yeah. you get put together if you're lucky. If like there's a bunch of people who are like we're a whole family and stuff like that. So right, 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 uh, right. You know, uh, yeah. Matterhorn is a great one, and you got to do it right. So. Yeah. So then from there, you're going to be getting into probably prime time. This is probably four or five o'clock. Um, hitting Peter Pan, you might have to brave that or maybe wait until the last, last uh, moment to go on Peter Pan because that lineup is always between 60 to 80 minutes. Yeah, um, it's always brutal, depending. but it's fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> it's such a. I- I, I think you gotta hit agree. It's a Small World as well. Like, I think take the mm-hmm. opportunity. I, I love It's a Small World. The song doesn't bother me. Um, you know, you might get taken to Tomorrowland, which is cool. So, yeah. go, like, you gotta do small, like, It's a Small World, which is just kind of over there. Skip Toontown completely. There's nothing you need to do. Roger's, Roger Rabbit is not gonna offer you anything that right. you can't get at any of the other ones. You know, yeah, if you walk by and you're like, Let's, uh, I kind of want to do it. I don't care what Dale says. And you know what? It'll be a short line. So you'll get to go on another attraction. But yeah, hey, you can, you know, depending on the crowd, you could do a bunch of stuff in Fantasyland. I kind of like that storybook, like Riverboat Ride. I kind of like just sitting there and experiencing the environment. So I'm okay with that yeah. stuff. Yeah, you said um, after Small World to do the storybook land <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. boats. Just, <laughs> so you're... That's funny. Yeah, it is kind of funny. So then... Um, you know, you uh, the you and Lauren kind of agreed on about thirty to forty-five minutes in Fantasyland as a uh, as a whole. Oh, and uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you got if you didn't get Dale Wetland's reference about uh, Small World and Tomorrowland, go watch the film. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, so after that, you are kind of you've you've kind of finished. You this is the end of you're probably at like maybe seven or eight o'clock. Um, once yeah, because flexibility, uh, flexibility. Sorry, just flexibility for us was important. You know, everyone's different, and yeah. you're gonna maybe want to do some rides twice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so then, yeah, your next thing on here was finding anything to ride a second time. So, and then maybe also, uh, we we never mentioned Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters, and if you're one of the, um, if you're a fan of that kind yeah, of yeah, thing, yeah. Um, like. Uh, it is um there's not going to be a huge wait for you yeah so you don't never, have to worry there's never that long you can, of a line up there it, yeah it's like little mermaid too there's never a huge wait for little mermaid so it's like 15 minutes at you know like so there there are rides that we didn't really include it because we're you have to do all the e-ticket attraction rides mm-hmm. right like that's mm-hmm. the key and um and for you you're probably going to be a little later in the day already than you're saying because you're going to yeah. get a later start so you're probably mm-hmm. at maybe 10 o'clock by now 
Yeah, yeah, probably at 10. Which, which is a perfect time to be in Fantasyland because the, the parade's on. Mm-hmm. So you've got an uh, electrical parade that's going to be coming by, which I found last time that if you go over to uh, the, uh, the teacups, and I know a lot of you are going right now, but hear me out. You can go on the teacups and keep yourself from spinning. You have pretty much a perfect view of the parade as it's coming by. And this was for um, when Paint the Night was there. We got to see Paint the Night as we went on teacups probably three or four times because everybody is trying to watch the parade and not trying to go on those rides in Fantasyland. So um, if you if you hit the teacups and make sure that you don't spin yourself till you're sick, you kind of get a, a great view of the uh, of the parade. But, but that's then, why Fantasyland's a perfect time during parades because yeah. you have to make, make sure you're on the other side, right? Mm-hmm, you have to get on the mm-hmm. other side. Once you're there, Everyone's wanting to do the parade stuff, so you get to you get to knock out some ride attractions in there. Absolutely. And so now, if it's ten o'clock, you're probably not going to be able to have some dinner. You've kind of skipped that already. You might have to grab maybe a hot dog or something at some point. Yeah. But if you are not in my situation, if you are, if you, if it's back to about probably eight o'clock, maybe going into New Orleans Square from Fantasyland and hitting up. Blue Bayou was your if you, yeah, suggestion you know, there. <laughs> yeah, seriously, if that's the one thing that you book your time around, I would if if when you guys are there in New Orleans Square, if you guys, you know, if your parents give you some money, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, sitting in Blue Bayou and and sitting in an attraction while you eat dinner is unprecedented. Uh, like it is so cool. You, the Pirates of the Caribbean's playing on the banjo. Y- you got it. Like you have to take the opportunity if you have, if like, if you have the ability to do it, and then no, get whatever agree. reservation time works for you, food wise, and then schedule your your day kind of around that because it's yeah shouldn't miss out. Yes, absolutely. I think that it is um, one of those gems that not a lot of casual people know about. They're like, whoa, why are there people sitting? Are, are they paid like? How do you yeah. get in there? And so, you know, through research and, you know, people like us, you figure out that that's actually a restaurant that you can go into, which is incredibly cool. And just the ambiance. If you're one of those people who loves ambiance, it's one yeah. of the best. Yeah. Which I am. Like, that's my... Yeah, me too. My, yeah, I... Yeah. One of the things I always tell Josh is the thing I'm most excited for in my life is to have gone to Disneyland so many times that I can just sit down and not have to do anything. <laughs> go sit on the, uh, go sit on, on the, the bench in main street. Yeah. Just sit on the bench in main street and just mm-hmm. sit there and take it in. Like that's, I, I never get to do that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So if we are going through the rest of Dale and Lauren's plan, You've got after Blue Bayou, you've got the electrical parade, or you might have to skip it if you are already at that time limit. Um, and then the parade is something that you definitely want to see as it is back for a limited time. For now, we don't know how long it's going to be here, but um, you know we'll see. And then after that, you've pretty much... Uh, you want to head back to Main Street. There is a lot of stuff to look at over there. And then, all your um, shops and stuff and for you, you I like the DCA shops even better so mm-hmm. you could head back over to DCA and do some shops but they close they close before D- Disneyland so right. you gotta be careful about that and there is one shop in DCA that has a pin book where you can look through an actual book and there are pins in it that you can trade with which is something that I like to tell everybody yeah. who goes through yeah. there that are hardcore pin traders like and I, yeah <laughs> and I like the I like the art store and stuff like that too so. yeah yeah, absolutely. That's like uh, Drake Bell from Drake and Josh. I was watching one of his vlogs the other day because he's a big Disney fan too, and he was like, "Yeah, I get all the artwork for my for my house at one of those uh, shops." And I was like, "That's actually really cool." So then, finishing up to the left of the castle behind the statue is where you can kind of see the projections on the castle, and you are also going to be able to see the fireworks from the from that spot. That was uh, Lauren, I think. Yeah. that spot back there which gives you kind of a full panoramic view of um what you're looking at because you'll be on main street so you can just walk down a little bit and um what time are the fireworks usually at on maybe a weeknight i think at 10 30 or 11 right mm-hmm. i think you're right so yeah. um you would you would hit those and then if you can 
the last two. Because you got to two... experience the fireworks, right? People yeah. are like, well, why are they going on a track? The fireworks are the one thing that you're like, I know I could go go on a ride right now, but you got to experience the fireworks. You got to do the fireworks because it is, like you said in the video, one of probably the best experience that you're going to get because of the audio, visual, and the kabooms. And so then after that, you want to hit back to Main Street or maybe go on one last ride, go through, weave through your way through some shops and see. You can even, uh, there's a little thing I didn't say, but you can even do Indiana Jones single rider at oh, this time. Yeah. yeah, they had do single rider and you go basically through the exit and you go backwards through the ride. And yeah, so that's the thing. You can knock out a couple uh, single rider stuff. Yeah, do Matterhorn maybe one more time if it hasn't closed yet, which I think yeah. it does close. Yeah. Um, and then if you're feeling a little hungry, you've got the hot dogs at the oh, refreshment God. corner. Yeah. Some of the best hot dogs yeah. in Disneyland. Yeah. I'm a pulled pork fool, so I just, yes. I mean, just like pulled pork. Yeah, sure, I'll eat it. It's like, well. <laughs> Absolutely. And then uh, if at that point you're probably probably everything's closing up no more rides uh you know for your shopping convenience the stores on main street are open for an hour <laughs> later yeah and so hopefully you can kind of weave your way through those shops and maybe get a cool photo on main street of yourself and no one else which yeah. i am so trying to do that yeah when i go this well, time yeah well that's the one thing one of the big mistakes i always make and i will always make it is i like to go into every store all the time and look at all the stuff but you know, you can do that when you're doing the exit through the gift shop stuff, but when for Main Street, like there's just you're just do it at the end when that's the yeah. only thing to do at Disneyland. You know, save your time. You know, Sit that's on. that's basically if you go through the that's you're wasting one or two attractions if you if you go into the gift shops too early. Right, you sit on the porch and just kind of chillax and watch. People watch is one of the best things that you can do at yeah. Disneyland. And then you're done. Then you're done for the day and you go home and you sleep for 12 hours because that was the most awesome <laughs> thing that you've done. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's our conversation on doing one ultimate day at Disneyland. If you've got any I, other ideas, uh, anything that we could... Uh, anything else that we could uh, add to this, absolutely let us know in the comments below, and I will definitely share these with Dale. Dale, how much time do we have left? Are we are we out of time? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Womp, womp, or... womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. it has been so incredibly fun to talk to you. I mean, it, um... Always. It's just... This... Not talk to me, talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. It was just uh, so fun to hear what you... Uh, what you th the way that you have constructed this day. And absolutely go watch the video on Network 1901's YouTube if you have not seen it. Because Lauren and Dale have a great back and forth and the way that they lay it out. They've got some really cool kind of graphics that pinpointed exactly where it is on the map. Um, great job to you, sir. And there was also... She some, did that, uh, actually. I made really? Lauren do all of the map graphics. That's Be awesome! Yeah, because I was going to edit, so I was like, I was editing, and it was a, it's a pretty, it can be, a, it's quite a long video, so yeah, I was like, oh, I gotta edit all this stuff, you send me the, and I had to be like, that doesn't work, or that's the wrong way, and so, <laughs> so she was like, yeah, she, you know. Um, a, little, a little frustrated with you at the very no, end, I presume. No, uh, you know, you can't be. I, that's the one thing, was like, you can't be frustrated when you were doing collabs and stuff with people yeah. and, and you just have to take feedback. And for me, I'm always like, like, I'm like, that's very, like, I love it. It's perfect. But could we see it <laughs> totally different? Completely different. <laughs> and I do that to Josh sometimes. And he's like, uh, yeah, I guess. And <laughs> then he does it. I'm like, nope, the first one was perfect. And it's like, <laughs> but it's, we have to do that stuff. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? If we're not just making sure that we're doing the right stuff, like, you know, we're just going to think we're great and we're going to be like, why does no one like us? And it's because right. we're not really challenge, challenging ourselves. But yeah. yeah, you can check out everything on Network 1901 uh, on net, uh, network1901.com uh, or just go to the YouTube page or subscribe to us on the podcast. And um, yeah, there, there's so much. We produce a lot of content, actually. I was thinking about it the other day. So there's something a lot for everybody. Of stuff on there right now. There's something for everybody. If you're a Star Wars fan, you're not super into Disney, we, we have it. If you're, you know, we have everything. It's It's, it's all there. It's the perfect place for you to indulge in your nerdiness, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, so much fun. Well, appreciate it, Dale. That was incredibly good time. And 
I will <laughs> let you know in Mar at the end of March. The uh, the vlog will be. We will we will be at the park. We will be making this video, and we will we will test the theory. We'll see if well, it, once your vlog once we'll your vlog comes together, we'll we'll have you on the show. Awesome. Uh, we'll have you on the show to talk about it. Maybe we'll get you on all, all the shows, and uh, that would be awesome. Sweet. I had a great time as always. You're such a nice guy, and uh, I hope you have a great well. time at Disneyland. Hey, thanks. And you can find Dale on Twitter at Dale Wetland. Correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, if you want to um, follow me, my normal, my normal yeah. stuff. Same with Instagram. Interact with him. Uh, you know, he controls Culture Club and Network 1901, so you'd be talking. And you guys always sign your names with a dash Dale or a dash Josh, which is always quite nice to see. Uh, makes it a little bit more personal. But if you want to get in touch with Dale, absolutely. Go yeah. to his Twitter. And um, <laughs> and this has been a special episode of Turning On to Harbor. Dale, will you do the honors? Bye, double hand wave. Thank you. Thank you so much.